Cryptocurrency and crime. It's tonight's topic in a week-long series about cryptocurrency. We've asked experts, how does it work? How do you even invest in it? How could it be harming the environment or contributing to renewable energy? And then how can it help with equity? But tonight, we're talking about crime. And like many neutral tools, it can be used for good and it can be used for harmful ways. I went to the FBI field office in Roseville to speak directly with special agents about how criminals use cryptocurrency and how we can protect ourselves from becoming victims. So start with the basics. How and why is cryptocurrency used in crimes? Cryptocurrency, we're seeing more and more often used in crimes nowadays as it's becoming more and more common. It's used in the sense of it's just another form of currency. People are using it to pay ransoms, to use in investment schemes and fraud. And it's being used a lot of the time because it's quick, it's less regulated, it's easier uh, for people to send that anonymously. So as the technology evolves, we will evolve in our investigations along with it. You know, you can't just use crypto and get away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is really the new way forward when it comes to technology and future applications. And unfortunately, it's being misused by some people to commit crimes. Here in the US, there's nothing illegal about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency itself. It's inherently just technology. It's in the way people misuse it. Now in the US, it's not recognized as fiat or legal tender. But if someone were to invest in it, even legitimately, it can still be taxable if they profit from it. Some countries, however, outlaw it altogether. And other countries even recognize it as legal property. So it, it really varies quite a bit around the world because cryptocurrencies haven't been around for much more than a decade. What are the components of a crime involving cryptocurrency? We work on a cyber squad, so both of us have actually seen uh, the use of cryptocurrency in what's called ransomware, when people essentially hijack your data and encrypt it so that you can't use it, whether it's on a server or whether it's on your personal computer. And then a note is sent and an offer is provided so that the criminal will decrypt the files for you, allegedly, provided that you send funds to their cryptocurrency address. Another uh, type of crime that I've seen has been investment fraud schemes. People are excited about cryptocurrency. They're hearing that people are making a lot of money on it. They're hearing that it's a really good place to invest and they want to get in on it. But it's confusing. People don't know where to go and how to do it. And they may get caught up in something that is not legitimate. Someone messages them. On, on Facebook, on WhatsApp saying, hey, I heard you want to invest, here's how you do it. And they'll get them to just basically just send the money to someone else. You'll just send the funds, it'll go overseas and you'll never see that money back again. Are there any specific steps or advice that you have for people to ward off such attacks? For those investing in cryptocurrency, one of the biggest things we can say is to use a reputable exchanger. Don't just go online and find one that has the cheapest fees because um, it may not be a legitimate service. So really do your research. Anyone who says guarantee returns, you're going to make money, that is almost definitely a scam because cryptocurrency is such a volatile market that anyone who guarantees that is running a scam, so you want to stay away from anything like that. The more common it becomes, the more people that are going to take advantage of that misplaced excitement. We've even seen instances of where someone that's not even interested in crypto but is victimized and manipulated, whether it was one of the romance fraud schemes that we've seen, the criminals will actually ask them to open up an exchange account and move the funds in that manner uh, because they're more anonymous and a little less regulated. There's a whole other segment of the population that is going to be taken advantage of, just using it as a vehicle uh, to move those illicit funds. We've already seen internal stats that are showing not just the number of victims, but the amounts of money that are being stolen in this way are going up. Uh, it's in the billions. You know, what really stuck out to me after talking with them was how, whether you're someone who's interested in cryptocurrency or you have no interest at all, fraudsters can get at all of us. And I don't say that to scare you, I just say that to maybe as we head into the weekend, nudge you to maybe change a few passwords. That's the advice from the FBI. Change passwords, turn on two-factor authentication where you get that text when you try to log in. I know it takes a few extra steps, but they say it really does make a difference in protecting you. And look, we all like to think we're immune to the deception of fraudsters, right? But the truth is lots of people fall prey to it every day. Criminals are just becoming more savvy at capturing our attention and earning our trust or fooling us. So if you or someone you know have been victimized, the FBI does ask you to come forward and report it. That helps them solve these crimes. We have a link to where you can do that on abc10.com slash to the point.